my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Tracy and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Of course, guess who's dying to know? I am. Trish. Hi guys, how are Hi. you? Hi, hello, hello, hello. Nice Ooh. to see you. Oh, we're somewhere different. We're somewhere different. Where's Carl? He's not here. You know what Carl's doing? What? He's probably off in Townsville, Toowoomba. One of those um, tea places. Somewhere doing something. Maybe. Well, we're at work. It's nice to be swanning around. Mm, anyway, is. never no. mind. I haven't grown a beard, by the way. No, she hasn't grown a beard, by the way. <laughs> Although some days it looks like I do. I think we all look a bit like that, though. <laughs> That's okay. It's not just you. All right, guys. So today we are here in the mortuary. Well, actually, we're not in the mortuary. We're in the mortuary garage. Yeah, we're in the garage where we transfer the deceased in. And we're going to show you the process for that. That was a question. That it was a us. question, yes. It and was. Um, we're just going to show you basically what happens when the transfer team, we're going to simulate what happens yep. when the transfer team brings a deceased in yep. and how. Tracy or the team gets them out of the vehicle and into the mortuary. So um, I might get behind the camera now and leave Tracy to do her thing. Okay. Oh, exciting. Okay, guys, I'm just going to remove my mask because you really can't hear me behind my mask. So let's take it off all together. Oh, this is the van. Okay. We can, you know. Um, transfer to two deceased from a hospital at one time now when we do a residence we only bring in one person at a time for a residence we don't go to a residence and then go to another residence or we don't go to a hospital to a residence it's always just one if it's a residence in private and I'm looking at Trish talking to you instead of talking to the camera I was like oh yeah <laughs> I'm just gonna um, show you how we unlock the stretchers and bring the stretcher out um, pretending there's a deceased on here obviously there's not at all simulated this so I'm just going to show you how we do this because they are locked in okay when we bring the stretcher out we have a, a lever which is down here and what we need to do is release that lever which releases the leg yeah and once we've released that first leg, we let go of the lever because we want the other leg to lock in place as well. So that was a click, and that's another click. That means that wheels are locked and it's safe to take away from the vehicle. So we will take, the deceased is in, in obviously under the covers here. And if you have a look down here, these are the wheels that makes it easier to slide in and out of the vehicle as well. So, what we're gonna do is go from here into the mortuary and into the fridge. Now, um, I'm really good at maneuvering this. <laughs> so we've got the head up this end and the feet at this end. And we're going to go in head first here. Okay, so from here, we're going to go and enter into the um, fridge, which is just up here uh, onto my right, and take the stretcher into the fridge, where once we're in the fridge, I'll show you how we're going to unload the um, deceased onto a tray. Okay, so once we get in the fridge, the, the noise uh, is really, really loud because of the fans that are on and we can't turn them off, obviously, because of, uh, we have to keep that temperature at the correct uh, temperature, so we can't turn the fans off. So. so once we go in, I won't be talking, but I'll just simulate what we're gonna do. Okay, let's go in. So when I 
transferred the simulation have taken the uh, deceased onto the tray and made sure that the deceased head was on the head block and then I will put the tray into a rack and then I would um, mark it on our board what rack that deceased is by their name and I would disinfect this down we have a um, alcohol disinfectant which I would clean all of this down and I am just going to go and put the um, stretcher back away so we'll do that because I don't think I need to talk about showing you how to do that do I? so I'm going to close this up and we're going to lock the um, stretcher back into the van ready for the next time I usually jam my finger in these, you know. It's like, ugh. I'm like, ugh. Because the big zips. All right. And we're all about being tidy. It has to be tidy. It has to be neat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you what we do with the stretches and this this is just an alcohol and we just lightly this is also what we've cleaned inside with alcohol but we place alcohol on here and just let that alcohol absorb and take any bacteria off there so let's put her away okay so again so again, I've got my lever at the bottom here, which I'm going to uh, release, and that's going to make the legs drop. And can you see that lever here? This is the lever that releases the legs and locks the legs. And that's all locked in locked and ready to be loaded again so stretch out was just a very basic showing of getting a stretcher out and in and all of that so obviously there's no body on there there's no weight on there so you obviously when there's the there's always two people on yep. the air transfer yeah uh in obviously if it's heavier yeah you know, what happens when you get a really big person because you've spoken before about the oversized coffins yeah and um how big people are these days yeah. Yeah. what happens in that situation is it the same procedure when you've got say somebody that's 150 kilos or whatever that is in pounds, pounds <laughs> and stones and everything yeah well if we go to transfer and say it's a residential transfer in the family say oh he's a bit larger about 100 kilos and then we get there and he's 150 the person's 190 you go well, it's going to be really difficult for two people so we usually call other people in like another transfer team to help because especially if it's a home transfer yeah because you'd have the family watching yeah, and the families there and and sometimes they're in them positions where they could be on the toilet mm -hmm. you know we've talked about dying on the toilet uh they could be wedged between the bed and the wardrobe you know they could have fallen halfway down the stairs with the head down you know there's all kinds of scenarios and like I've had one in the wardrobe before legs out and the rest of the body in the wardrobe and rigor mortis sets in pretty quick so you, they're really stiff and hard to move so if you get somebody that's really really large it's best one for health and safety reasons and two for the dignity of the deceased and the family yeah. around yeah. to get about four people in to try and you know, uh, what we do is roll and wrap them in a sheet um, and get them on the stretch. And those stretches go right to the floor as well. That so makes if the it pers easier. the person's yeah. on the floor, yeah. um, the stretcher will go on the floor, then we can roll and pull the deceased with the air sheet onto the stretcher. And then it clicks up just as we showed you there. Yeah. It clicks up into uh, stages so we can go from the floor up. So and also you're easier. dealing with stairs. You're dealing yeah. with maybe narrow hallways, you're dealing yeah. with clutter on the floor in yeah. houses, pot plants and all yeah. sorts of things. So I've got a sling, so I'll show you what we use for instead of the stretcher, because okay. sometimes we're up in spiral staircases and you yep. can't get the stretcher up, or you've got rooms where the doors are so narrow you can't get the stretcher up, so it has to stay downstairs or outside. Yep. Because, you know, they're in an apartment block There's and it's an alarm descent. going off somewhere. It's a day fib, isn't it? So. Um, so sometimes we can't use the stretcher in the building because there's no access for a stretcher. Right. So we'll have what we call as a sling. Uh-huh. And um, Go I'll get it. I'll show, show everybody. 
Right. Okay, so this is what we have, is what we call our sling. Do you want to have a bit of a hold? So, right. As you can see, as you can see, it's a bit like a sleeping bag, I suppose, with straps on it. Right. Yeah. So, what happens is we'll, we'll wrap the deceased up in a sheet. Yep. This will go underneath the deceased, and with all these straps, We've got a few people we then carry yep. downstairs. So it's more manoeuvrable. Yeah, so it, you know, and, and what we do when we tell the family is, we, you know, if it's a staircase, we'll go, we'll just gently bump, you know, the bum down the stairs. And we usually get the family to help because if we can get as many people as we can, uh, just it takes all the weight and then we can gently get them down the stairs. And do you, you know? find that the family are usually okay to help? Uh, majority of families want to help you know really want but sometimes you go there and it's a little really old person and the partner's very old and can't and frail and can't do that so but if there's a lot of family there and they're, they're willing to help in the look able to help we'll get them in. they'll ask or we'll ask them and they'll go yeah i'd love to or no no i don't want anything to do with it i'll want to go out until you finish so it's you know combinations of some do help some don't mm. because they just don't want to do that but some people love that i'm taking them to the very last you know and yeah. we've had people put the stretches in yeah the families put the stretches in because they want to do that they want yeah. to have it as their last you know help of that loved one to uh, take them on the take way take them onto their last journey mm. for us so nice. yeah so there's a few different ways we use the the sling and the stretches to transfer the deceased cool yeah there we go if you've got any questions on that guys let us know yeah. um i think we've talked about this a few times we but have. um we've had the question a few times as well for people yeah. asking how the transfer vehicles work so you've got a couple of transfer teams where you work yeah and they yeah. go out 24 hours yeah 24 7 nursing yeah. homes and private residences. yeah residents nurses and, and hospitals and hospitals hospitals are usually working hours business hours because yeah. hospitals have refrigeration and yeah they don't need to um call in the team in the middle of the night when they have anybody pass away in a hospital they'll be put into their morgue in the hospital and we get called in. So yeah. just give that a bit of a thought. So we're standing here outside Tracy's mortuary where she works and the vehicle comes in right here, right near the door. So imagine that two o'clock in the morning, you've just been called out, the transfer team's been called out to pick up a deceased. So they pick up the deceased maybe from a nursing home or a private residence and they bring them in here to uh, what is an industrial estate or commercial into a commercial estate really. Yeah. So not a lot of people around in the middle of the night where it's, a bit, you know, it's very dark in here. Yeah, and to bring them in and then open the mortuary door and take them into the cool room that I can vouch for is full today yes. with yeah. a, what would you have in there? About 10 people. Uh, yeah, mm. at the moment we've got 10. Yeah, about 10, about 10. so... Yeah, just spare a thought for those people who do that job as yes. well. I mean, Tracy's, you know, in the light of day doing her work. Yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, no, but I mean, then, yeah, it's not a scary thing, but it is. And obviously, the transfer teams know what they're doing, and they do know what they're doing. But they sometimes get spooked, especially if there's a big storm and it's coming to summer here. And you know, our storm seasons in the summer, and you know what it's like. We have them cut. big storms, and and you know, in the middle of the night, Lightning. the transfer team will go. Oh my God, it was thundering and it was light and it was pouring rain and we couldn't find the light switch to turn the light on and oh, I don't want to get At least it. there's always two of them. Yeah, yeah, there's always two. Yeah, never on the own in the no. middle of the oh. night. Oh, yeah, did we dribble on again? I think so. Oh, but we get to hang out and that's fun too. Yeah, we don't mind dribbling on. All right, guys, well, whatever Cal's doing, he says hello. Yes, he does. Probably send us a postcard at some point, no doubt. Uh, if he turns to surfing. Or... Oh, surfing. I hope he doesn't go to Fraser Island. Why? There's lots of dingoes and you know what dogs like. Oh, dogs, there's lots of dingoes. Oh, give the dog a bone. Oh, no, Cal, don't go there. Don't go, Cal, don't go. All right, guys, till next time, Take like, care. subscribe. We'll see you later. Yeah, bye. bye.